Psalms chapter 9. To the chief musician, again, a, a song upon myth Lydon. And the note here it says means the death of a son, not a musical instrument. A psalm of David. David had sons that died. So with the death of the son, here comes a, a, a hymn, a psalm. And the main word of this psalm, chapter 9, is judge. Judgment, judge. And again, we're going to see the second advent. And we know the Bible has been fulfilled with the prophecies of the first advent. A virgin shall conceive, will be born in Bethlehem. Uh, they'll, you know, they'll cast lots for his clothes. He'd be lifted up, not a bone of him should be broken. We know all those prophecies have been fulfilled, but to realize that prophecy is only the tip of the iceberg when we realize <clears throat> all the prophecy, <coughs> excuse me, of the rapture. Paul spoke about in Thessalonians that there's coming a time that the church will be caught up. Peter speaks about it. The times of the of the great tribulation and the tribulation period, uh, Jacob's trouble, we're going to see that here mentioned. And then we got the second advent, we got the millennium all mentioned, we got the great judgment of the great white throne judgment mentioned in the scriptures there is a lot more prophecy going to be fulfilled and has been fulfilled that god is 100 percent prophecy or none at all and all these worldwide prophets that you know what you know sometime in 2020 an important person is going to get married and an important person is going to die listen god gives detail about his prophecy. I will praise thee, O Lord, with a whole heart, with my whole heart. I will show forth all my marvelous work. You know, kind of funny for a, a hymn that starts off with the name of the death, death of a child or a son. And for the Christian and even the Old Testament, when you know somebody who's died in the Lord, and it's possible to know in somewhat to a point in the old testament for as a christian when you know someone who's died in the lord and there's you you miss them you love them but you know where they are i will be glad and rejoice in thee god i will sing praises to thy name O thou most high so here he goes This will be the celebration of the nation of Israel being picked up by the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes back in the second advent. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, my allergy. When Jesus Christ comes back, that is the blessed hope of Christians. It's also the blessed hope of the nation of Israel because here comes the Messiah. Here comes the one who's going to eliminate our enemies, not Rome. The first advent of Jesus Christ, but the Antichrist, the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. When my enemies are turned back, and the, the nation of Israel, all ages have had all many, a lot of enemies, and many of them are not even enemies, they're no more today. You can't find a Babylonian. Now, they may be of Babylon, but there is no Babylonians today. And shall fall and perish at thy present, die for at God. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, man, he's going he's gonna to do a little gathering. We're going to gather a group of people who are called the, the sheep nations, those that helped the Jews in the tribulation period, and those will be goat nation that didn't help the jews that were an enemy of the jews and those that are goats and those who are an enemy and did wrong to the nation of israel i will curse them that curse you boom right off into hell and the nations that help god i will bless them that bless you boom right into the millennium and those that when jesus christ does come 
and they hate God. In the book of Revelation, there'll be things going on. They'll be cursing God. They'll receive that mark, and they become enemies of God. There you go. For thou, God, has maintained my right and my cause. Thou saidest in the throne, judging right. Jesus Christ is going to take the throne of uh, David one day. Kings judge. Jesus Christ will judge. Thou, God, has rebuked the heathen. Here he comes, second advent. Thou has destroyed the wicked. The wicked. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. The Antichrist. When Jesus Christ comes back, the false prophet and the beast are cast off into hell. The devil's locked up for, for a million years. Thou, God, Jesus, has put out their name forever and ever. Jesus said that I come in my Father's name, no man receiving, but he that cometh in his own name, you'll be, just not quote the verse completely, <clears throat> him you will receive. Now, a lot of believe it's Judas Iscariot. Whatever name that the Antichrist comes in, whatever name the false prophet comes in, there coming a time where you're not going to remember those. Listen, when a man goes into hell, he is nameless and has no more name. I think the only time he will have a name before he doesn't have a name no more is at the great white throne judgment when they call him up. Now, the Bible says our tears and those that are saved are not wiped away until after the great white throne judgment when we are in that heavenly city, New Jerusalem. Because I think it's going to be at the great white throne judgment. You're going to say, uh, Joseph Smith, come up. And I'm not talking about the Mormon. I'm just mentioning it. Joseph Smith. Well, if you're a saved Christian and you were of the family of Joseph Smith, you're going to hear your loved one called. And then whether it be Tom Jones or, or Fred, or whatever. We're going to hear the names of our loved ones. And if the name is in the church age period, when it gets called to the great white throne judgment, there is no hope and there is no salvation because they were gone up in the rapture. That rich man. Well, we know about Lazarus going to Abraham's bosom, but we don't know what the rich man's name is. And it's like God will say, or Jesus will say, check the, the man's book of life. If there is their name in there. And at that point, if it's not in there, they lose their name, they lose their identity, and they go off in the lake of fire. But we're going to know those names. Whether it be our fathers, our mothers, our grandmothers, our grandparents, our brothers, our sisters, our co-workers, whoever it is, our wives, our husbands, our children. We're going to hear their name get called up. And like I said, for the great white throne judgment, if the name is called up is in the church age from the time of Acts chapter 2 to the rapture, if that person is during that period of time, they're called to the great white throne judgment, there is no salvation. Now, there's salvation if their name is in the book. They're before the law, during the law, and in the tribulation period. They have a chance. Their name in the book, they'll, they'll go to glory. You'll be nameless when you end up in hell. And possibly we'll hear your name get called up before the great white throne judgment. And we're going to know who you are. And then for no more name after that. <clears throat> oh, thou enemy. Well, who's the enemy? The Antichrist. The nations against the Jew. Destructions, plural, are come to a perpetual end. Seven years. The tribulation period is over. Here comes Jesus. You ain't going to torment that Jew no more. And even when the devil is loose at the end of the million years, he ain't going to do no damage. He's going to gather an army. He's going to go, you're gone. Once Jesus Christ comes back for that Jew, that's it. It's signed, settled. Those Jews, they're protected. I don't know if, there, if anybody's going to be afraid when, when the devil masses his army. But it ain't going to come to nothing. And, thou, and we know that perpetual end is at the end of seven years. And thou hast destroyed city. Listen, the Bible says that there's going to be that great earthquake. 
that great earthquake crank is going to do, oh, we're going to come back. We're going to come to Daytona Beach, Florida. Daytona Beach, Florida ain't going to be here. We're going to come. Oh, they're going to be Christian. Oh, I want to go see where, where Donald Trump lived at the White House. And the White House ain't going to be here. America ain't going to be America. Italy won't be Italy. The Paris won't be Paris. Poland won't be Poland no more. Their memorial, their memorial, what? The great name, all the great city is perish with them, the people. You're going to come back and say, oh, where, where was that great city that I, what city? I, I don't, well, our church was such a great pillar in our city and state. It ain't there no more. You're not going to come back. In the, in the millennium and, and come to the air and find your church building stand it ain't going to be happening but the Lord shall endure forever God is going to outlast any city any place in this world he has prepared his throne for judgment that would be the judgment seat of Christ for the Christian and the great white throne judgment for, for all the world and coming back to judge the nation. At the second advent. He shall judge the world in righteousness. How is God going to judge in righteousness? What the Bible says. That is the guy. Uh, I'm good. Well, your good may not match the Bible's good. It may not match Jack's good. It may not match Sally's good. Your good may be no good. There are people out there think they do good and they're doing evil. <coughs> he shall minister. Oh, no, look at that. Minister. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. God's judgment is going to be holy and it's going to be right. Look at that word minister. There be oh, our minister of our church. And then he'll get up there, paint a fiery message about lilies and sunflowers and and little chocolate Easter eggs and, and little Santa Claus coming down and he won't mention nothing about judgment and the Bible says about God ministering judgment minister judgment and what's going to be the rule it's going to be the word of God it's going to be Jesus Christ who fulfilled the whole law when a lost man gets at judged at the great white throne judge his works like the Bible says, every man's work shall be tried. So the books will be open, the great white throne judgment, and all those works, you know, what they, though, everything he's done is going to be put up against Jesus Christ and what he has done. All right, you 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 violated uh, adultery. You got, oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. God, I, I never cheated on my wife. And then, okay, the Bible says, who's going to look upon a woman? All right, let's bring up all the porno. Let's look at looking at those women, the cat calls, and and looking at that woman that you work with and all that, that's adultery. You failed. Jesus Christ never failed. How about honoring your parents? Well, I was good. I was a good child. Well, no, no, no. You made your mother cry. When we bring hey, mom come up and tell us all the time that you cried for your dear son. Jesus never caused Mary to cry. Jesus God obeyed his parents, the Bible tells us, in Luke and in Hebrew. What a person does at the great white throne judgment, yeah, it'll be brought, it'll be, okay, you're such a good person, but well, let's match you with the good of Jesus Christ. See how well you do. <clears throat> so look at that minister, judgment. And the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. And in the tribulation period, that will be those that do not receive the mark. And the number one person of that scripture will be the Jewish people. And a refuge in times of trouble, and you match that word to Jacob's trouble. There it is. Listen, the Bible says that Jesus said that that period of the tribulation period, especially the last three and a half years, he says that about the times, if times were not short, even the very elect wouldn't be able to survive. But he says for the very elect, the times will be shortened. <coughs> God's got to shorten the time for people to get through. And we always say time's going by quicker and quicker. It will get even quicker. And they that know thy name, 
Jesus, will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. Now, let's go over to Revelation 9, real, 19 real quick. Check something out here. Revelation 19, there's something really interesting said about Jesus. At the end of the tribulation period, and what we just read, what David said. And we can't call David a liar. But Revelation 19, 11, this is the seventh year of the tribulation period, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful, capital F, and true, capital T. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth. And in righteousness, he does judge. There we go. There is Psalms chapter 9. All right? And make war. You know, people out there, let's end war. No war. Well, there's, there's coming a war. They're going to battle God on the horse. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his head with many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. You're going to come to the time at the end of the tribulation period, no one's going to know the name of Jesus. His name is going to be wiped off of, of the earth. And read on. And he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. Men's blood, not his blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Now, let's run over to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. <clears throat> John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, capital W, and the Word, capital W, was with God, and the Word, capital W, was God. And I'm told in Salem Peter somewhere that there's been men and I haven't done the full story. Look into it. There are men over there who put Bibles. And they hid them throughout South Petra. And maybe when those men get in there, if they're still there, may the Lord say, hey, look in that cubby hole right there. Because in the world, Jesus Christ in the tribulation period is going to disappear. Because God will be in the tribulation period, will be the Antichrist. And, and the devil incarnate, uh, if this Judas, his name, they're going to do signs, seals, and wonders that are going to amaze all the Pentecostals. And they're going to call him God. And he's going to die. <gasps> he's dead. And he's going to come up from the grave. And they'll sing, up from the grave he arose. Conqueror of the mighty foe. Not about Jesus, about the Antichrist. And everything that Jesus has done, the Antichrist is going to do, and he will be their Jesus. And then when he sits in that place called the desolation, the abomination, when he sits in that holy place and the veil is, is welled open for the television to show that there he is, the Jews are going to say, no one belongs on that seat but God. And that's when the Jews are going to realize, uh-oh, and that's when Jesus said, listen, don't go down to your house, get your coat, just run. If you're out in the field, don't go back to your house, get anything. Run. You better play, you better pray that doesn't happen on the Sabbath because the airplanes are going to be banned. The airplanes are going to be closed for the Sabbath. And if you're with a child, if you're going to have a child, man, you're going to have to take care of that child. And it's going to have to be received the mark, or you're going to watch that child die in your arms. Because you're going to die. But according to Revelation 19, here comes Jesus, and no one's going to know who he is by name. It's possible, possible, possible that the Antichrist is going to wipe out the name of Jesus. But he says, they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. That's me. I know the name of Jesus. For thou, Lord, has not forsaken and that seek thee. I've sought the Lord. And we'll be the ones, the Christians, will be mounting up behind Jesus on our horses or mules and coming back with Jesus in Joel chapter 3. 
coming to like we really need to help Jesus, but coming back to help Jesus gather those Jews and bring them into Jerusalem, as Joshua and Moses did. Now Moses died crossing that, not crossing the Red. I mean the, the Jordan River. Joshua brought Joshua. Joshua means Jehovah saves. Jesus means Jehovah saves. So when Acts and seven and Hebrews says Jesus brought them in, don't you dare change it because that's prophecy. I know Joshua did it. Don't change it because Jesus is going to do it much better. And when Jesus does it to bring the Jews across the Jordan River into the promised land, he's going to bring his bride, the Christians, with him. Hey, look at this. See, that's wild. The Bible's wild. Sing praises to the Lord, which dwell in Zion. Dwell in Zion? Where's Zion? That's Jerusalem. Jesus Christ in, in verse 11 of chapter 9 is seated in Zion. Zion. The Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. I'm sorry, Jehovah Witnesses. Jesus is God and God is Jesus. Jesus is the king. Jesus is going to Jerusalem. Jesus is going to dwell in Zion. It says God here. It is God dwelling in Zion. You're wrong. The Bible's right. Shut up and repent and get right. Declare among the people his type doing. We are to tell as Christians, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Don't go all the way. Hey, you come to my church. Okay, we're going to have a movie. We can have bowling night. Oh, we just, we have a, such a great pastor. Oh, we just let our light shine. You're supposed to tell what Jesus Christ done. What did Jesus do? He suffered and died according to the scriptures. It was buried and arose again according to the scriptures. It's all about Jesus and not God. Well, we have a movie. Oh, you have a movie. You're a liar. No, no, our movie. Oh, someone plays Jesus? Oh, yeah, in our movie. They're not Jesus. That guy's name is Fred, Tom, or whatever his name is. His name is not Jesus. If it is, that's not the name above all names. Have you got a Mary in your in your movie? Yeah, we got a Mary. Well, her name is Martha. Her name is Phyllis. Her name is Sally. Her name is whatever her name is. It ain't Mary. And you ain't holy enough to be Jesus. And you're sure not holy enough to be Mary because Mary had to be that special vessel chosen by God, though she's not exalted like the Catholic Church. But you can't fit Mary. Your Mary may smoke cigarettes or drink booze outside of playing that movie. Your Mary may be, maybe, I don't know, a sinner, like Mary was a sinner. But if your name is not Mary and you say you're Mary so you can play the part, you're a liar, you, you commit a false witness. King Saul said, well, I'm not the king. You're a liar. Tell what the Lord has done. Preach the gospel. When he make his inquisition for blood. That ain't the Catholic inquisition. The Catholic inquisition shed blood. This thing was just, see, you know, see, for blood. So the Catholics will say, see, there, you know, we, we killed people. We purged the nation of those heretics. Those heretics were Bible-believing Christians that love the Lord Jesus Christ. And you are a Bible uh, offender. You have chained up the Bible. You have closed the Bible. You have given the men the traditions and what your dope pope says as the, as the word. You have gone against the Bible. And you have killed the, the people of God, Revelation. And when Jesus Christ comes back and he's seated in the, in this, in the seat of David, the throne of David, uh, he's going he's gonna to make a right, fearful, judgment, holy, diligent search of the, of the charges against you. And you better believe it, it won't be, well, you know, no, man, no man's going to be in hell. I, I wasn't supposed to be in here. Now, granted, I met men in prison that well, I'm not supposed to be. Okay, maybe you're right. Maybe. But you ain't going to stand, been charged by Jesus Christ and go off into prison hell and say, well, oh, you know, I, I, was guilt, I wasn't guilty. I'm innocent. You ain't going to do that. He remembers them. 
He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. So when the, when the Jewish people and the nations that do help the Jewish people in the tribulation, they're crying out in pain. They're crying out for mercy. And even the, there's, a, there's a part in the Revelation that says that the souls that have been beheaded for the word of God, they're crying, they, Lord God, how long? And to avenge us. I know. I'm listening. I, I know what's going on. And there's some more people I know is going to die before I do something. And when Jesus Christ comes back on horse, you better believe he knows who you are. He knows what you've been doing. He knows you've been naughty. He knows you've been nice. It ain't Santa Claus. When Jesus Christ with the flame of fire out of his eyes and the sword that comes out of his mouth, and we come back, we're behind. And when we find a dead man on the ground and his soul is going into hell, that's righteous and true. And we take up the guy here, and he, he's a Jew or, or he's even a heathen. We take him, he has done right, and Jesus Christ is right. Very believe. Have mercy upon me. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah, have mercy. Consider my trouble. Okay, who's writing? David's writing. David is of Israel. He's of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob's trouble. There it is. Jewish trouble. Which I suffer of them that hate me. Who hates the Jew? The Antichrist and the nations that are with the Antichrist hate the Jews. They hate Jesus. There were even Jews that hated Jesus when he came back the first time. And there will be people that will hate Jesus when he comes back the second time. There will be people that hate God in the tribulation period. Thou that lifteth me up from the gates of death. Listen, the Bible says that in the tribulation period, they're going to be beheaded for the word of God. Some of them are literally left, lifted up because the Bible says under the throne of God they cried out. When they died, they were brought to God. There's a, there is a mid-tribulation rapture. I don't fully understand it to the fullest, but there is in the period of rapture, there's a, there's a tribulation. Jesus said, you know, two shall be in a bed and one, one caught up. There's been two in the field and one caught up. And one left behind. Two will be grinding in the mill. One caught. One. That's not the church rapture. Come on, listen. My wife, if she was living today, or either one of my one of my wives, they were living today, and I was living in bed with them, and the rapture happened for the church. We would both go together from the same bed because we were both saved. Only way you would not go up in the church rapture is you're not saved. According to Jesus, during the rapture in the middle of the tribulation, there's a 50-50 population going up. Two people, one's going, one's staying. And then they don't go to they don't go to heaven. He said, well, where does the body go? It goes where the where the eagles are gathered together. You got you gotta get the Bible right. You know, it'd be rumors of wars and rumors of earthquakes. Oh, there's a war right now in Iran. We got to worry. Oh, the rapture's coming. Yeah, because there's a war. Then. There's always been rumors of war. Jesus is talking to, to 12 men who are Jewish, talking about the Jewish nation of Jewish. There's no time when the rapture is prophesied. Rapture could happen any time. That I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughters of Zion. When Jesus brings the Jewish people into Jerusalem and he sets up the throne of David, it's going to be all, I mean, there's going to be celebration beyond all celebration. The curse is removed off the earth, separate from the serpent, and everything will be like it was in the Garden of Eden. The, the, whatever causes wine production to stop is not going to happen. There will be no weed. Olive trees are going to produce olives graciously and wonderfully. Grapes are going to be just formed delicious and pure and just a bounty. Wheat is going to be, a, there's going to be no tares in the wheat. The barley is going to grow just one, and there's going to be just all kinds of great celebration. We are here. Here's the temple that Jesus Christ has built. And we got the priests doing the services, and we're doing it with the Messiah sitting there. There he is. 
come, let's go and rejoice. And the Bible says the horses are going to have bells of holiness. That ain't happening today. I will rejoice in thy salvation. God's salvation. The heathen are sunk down in the pit, hell, that they made. Hey, they, they made their own bed. They wanted to serve the devil. Second Thessalonians. I'll show you. They wanted, they wanted to do it. And God's going to give them what they want. I think it's Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 10. Oh, verse 9. Even him, the Antichrist, whose coming is after the working of Satan... And all power and signs and lying wonders, there's the Antichrist, and with all deceivableness, I'm not just deceiving, deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. That's what we just read in, that's what we just read. Because they receive not the love of the truth, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, that they be, might be saved. We said, thy salvation. For this cause God shall show them a strong delusion that they should believe in a lie and that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Listen, God's going to give what they want. They know what the truth is. They've heard it. You can get it on the radio. You can get it on the internet. You can get it when you go getting your produce in Daytona Beach. There are plenty of churches that do preach the truth that you drive by. They're on the radio. Hey, listen, our church, if you don't want to go Sunday night and, and, and being part of the choir and study, 5 o'clock Sunday night, our pastor's on the radio. And many people have heard him and come to our church. The heathen are sucked down in the pit that they made. And in the net, catches animals, catches fish. Fish was a man. They lay, they hid as their own foot taken. They caught their own self. When they're standing at the great white throne judgment and they're going to be damned in the lake of fire, it's their fault. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. When they're standing before God at the great white throne judgment, they're going to know, all right, that's God. Once they're finished their judgment, they're declared guilty. Depart from me, work of iniquity. I never knew you. They're going to proclaim, the Bible says they're going to fall on their knee and proclaim Jesus is the Lord. And all the people quote, you know, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. And people do quote, you know, every knee shall bow. Did you know it's in Psalms chapter 9? Verse 16, there it is. The wicked, the wicked, the wicked is a snare, a trap, a net a, in the work of his own hands. The Antichrist is going to dig his own pit and get his own damn nature. Haggadah, or Haggadah, and that means meditation. Sila. Remember I told you, Sila? That's a musical rest. Take a rest. Also has believed to be content of the second advent. Look at all the second advents we've seen. We've even seen the millennium. The wicked shall be turned into hell. The Antichrist goes to hell before the devil does. And the false prophet. The devil gets locked up in the pit. Chained for a thousand years. The Antichrist, the false prophet, and the beast get thrown right into the lake of fire. And I've got scripture to show you. The devil ain't going to stand at the great white throne judgment. The Antichrist is not going to stand at the great white throne judgment. The false beast is not going to fall into the great white throne judgment. They fall right into the lake of fire before people go. It says the devil was, was put into the lake of fire. Then I saw the heavens, something, and then I saw the, the earth fly away. Then I saw a great white throne judgment. 
and then they were cast. The devil, the false prophet, and the Antichrist are cast in the lake of fire long before anybody shows up at the Great White Throne Judgment. Read your Bible. All right, let's read it for you. Okay, Revelation chapter 19. I don't think I don't think people when you tell them to go read the Bible, I don't think they go read the Bible. I think they go look at the comic books and believe what the comic books say. You say, what's the comic books? Many of the pulpits that we are in, in the world. Look at this. Uh, Revelation 20, verse 10. And the devil, we know who he is, that deceived them that cast was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone. Where the beast and the false prophet are. So the devil's cast in the lake of fire, but the beast and the false prophet are already there waiting for him. So there is the lake of fire, the devil's there, and I saw a great white throne judgment. Before that great white throne, the devil is in the lake of fire, which before the devil goes in the lake of fire, the false prophet and the antichrist are there. Then comes the great white throne judgment. The devil's cast in the lake of fire before the great white throne judgment. The devil is not going to stand before God and declare, Thou art the Lord. I know that's a wild teaching, but look, he's in the lake of fire before the great white throne. Let's look at verse 15. All the people are standing before God, and whoso was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. Guess who's waiting there? The devil's waiting there. Guess who's been waiting for the devil? The false the false prophet and the antichrist. I know that's a weird particular teaching I have, but read it. Read your Bible. The Bible says not only read it, it says study it. That's why you got to have a King James 1611 authorized Bible and get rid of the crap Bibles. The comic book version. The wicked shall be churned into hell. Hell goes in the lake of fire. And what we read, we were read it there in Revelation 20. Death and hell was cast in the lake of fire. So the place of hell and the place of, of judgment is in hell before the people start showing up. So who goes in the lake of fire? The beast, the antichrist, go in the lake of fire first. Then the devil goes in the lake of fire. Then hell empties itself out. And when hell empties itself out and everybody stands the great white throne judgment, then death and hell go into the lake of fire. Then the people go. Read your Bible. Revelation 20. And all the nations that forget God. Babylon. For the needy shall not always be for forgotten. So don't think, uh, oh Lord God, my prayers are not getting, Lord God, the world is against me. The world hates me because I'm a Christian. The Bible says, Jesus said, marvel not, the world hates you. And don't worry, I know you. I, I love you. I'll take care of you. The Bible keeps telling you over and over, don't envy the wicked. Don't envy the, the, the wrongdoers. Don't envy those. Because listen, they, they may get the whole world in their hand, but the world they're going to get is going to burn up. It's going to dissolve, Peter said. And we, we get a new heavens, new earth, and new Jerusalem. And when we're in New Jerusalem as Christians, we're never going to suffer. We're never going to have no more food. We're not going to have drink. We're not going to have water. We're not going to have poor. We're not going to have need. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. There are people out there who are unloved because they serve the Lord. When they get the glory and they get the New Jerusalem, it'll be forever loved. Arise. Well, guess what that means, O Lord? Guess what that expression means? Well, let's see. Acts chapter 7. Let's see what it would be. Arise. Acts chapter 7. Scripture is scripture, people. Come on. Get your head out of comic books. All those superheroes. My Jesus is a superhero. You know what my power of my Jesus is? It gives eternal life. Oh, your guy, your, your guy can see through walls, x-ray vision, what? So you can see naked women dressed up? I don't know.
mushroom preparer can make fire. Well, my God can make fire too. Uh, well, Acts 7, verse 55. This is Stephen. He's about to be killed for the word of God. But he, Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing. There he is. Arise, O Lord. What's Jesus doing? Get ready to come and get. If the nation of Israel, here's another wild teaching, but if the nation of Israel said, you know what, Stephen, you're right. Repent. We get right. Oh, man, that was our Messiah. Jesus was, all right, let's go get him. And the tribulation period was started right then. But they didn't get right. That's a wild teaching. Then why was he standing? He was standing to come get his own. You really believe that? You better believe it. I just said it, didn't I? I don't think I need to repent. If I do, I'll have to get wood, hay, or stubble for it. Arise, O Lord. Let not man prevail. Man's not going to prevail. Can you imagine a guy, a, a, a guy at the end of the tribulation period where there's no light, no sun, no moon, no stars? You imagine he's going to pull his 45 out and go check you, bang, 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 to Jesus. <laughs> he's going to launch a nuclear missile at Jesus. <laughs> he won't even know where to push the button. It's too dark. You know what the Bible says at the end of the tribulation when Jesus comes? They're going to take all their idols, they're going to throw them to the bats, they're going to throw them in the caves, and they're going to hide in the rocks. <laughs> That's what they're going to do. Arise and let not man prevail. I'm not a man. I'm a child of God. Let the heathen, there they go, be judged in thy sight when he comes back. There's the judgment of the goats or the sheep. There it is right there. Matthew 25, I think it is. Put them in fear. Oh, they'll be afraid. They're going to get rid of their gods and they're going to hide. What the Bible said. Oh, Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men as i mean but men when jesus christ comes back you know man's gonna think oh look how great look how look how marvelous we are look at the technology we've got during the tribulation look at our god over here. look at the great things he's got i'm talking about the antichrist god and then jesus is gonna come and this your god this guy right here you watch this you're going to hell Right into the lake of fire. That's your God. There he goes. What about your prophet? You don't right into the lake of fire. How's that? Give me a devil. You want to see what I do with the devil? Chain him up. Now guess who God is? Me. You didn't believe in me? We'll jump in the lake. We'll jump in hell. True. 